Hi everyone, welcome to Singularity Beast Upgrades Part 8. Now this video is going to be about the specifications of this system. And when I say specifications, I don't just mean the base hardware, I mean I'm going to talk about every little component in this build. So I better get into it because this is going to take me quite a while. I've had people asking me, you know, I've had thousands of questions about the specifications of the system so this is everyone's opportunity to find out exactly what's gone into this build uh, the other thing is there's only going to be one more video on this build after this and the the final video on this build is going to be the benchmarks the testing benchmarks temperature results overclocking and I have a big surprise coming up I mean it's obvious what I'm hinting at but yeah I'm going to keep all the details under wraps uh, I'm still not sure how long it's going to be until I can yeah until I'll be making videos on this big surprise but I can guarantee that it'll yeah I can guarantee that it will be within the next three weeks actually so so there you go Alright, time to get started on the specifications of this system. So, obviously it's built into the Corsair Obsidian 800D. The motherboard is the Rampage 3 Extreme. The CPU is the Core i7-980X. The memory is 12GB of Corsair Dominated GT 2000MHz. The graphics cards are 3 Gainwood Phantom GTX 580 3GB editions. The hard drives I have. So the Corsair Obsidian 800D has four hot swap bays. In the top one, I have an OCZ Vertex 36. Uh, sorry, 120 gig with the the operating system on it. I then have two Western Digital Blacks in RAID 0, and they're one terabytes each. I then have two two terabyte western digital blacks and one of them is down there in the bottom the power supply is the Corsair AX 1200 so it's obviously a 1200 watt power supply the optical drive is an LG Blu-ray writer sorry there it is uh, okay, while I'm looking at the front, I might as well show you the fan controllers. I have a Scythe four-channel fan controller. I think it's a Scythe server, but I've forgotten exactly what that one's called. The one below it is the Zelman ZMFC3. Sorry, ZMMFC3. Yeah. And yeah, I just have a switch panel, a custom switch panel on the front there for the lighting. The fans, I'm running an NMX TB Silence fan just there. Underneath that panel, I'm running a Cooler Master 140mm fan. Uh, I'll just show you actually because I've forgotten which one it is exactly. It's been so long since I've installed it and I haven't even, haven't even had a look at it. Obviously it needs a bit of a dust clean. Okay, I think I'll talk about the water cooling system now. The fans that I'm running in the top there are Noxua NFP12s. And the fans that I'm running on the rear radiator are Feza Treework Mid-Speeds. Okay, both the radiators are Feza Exchanges. I have a 360mm in the top and a 480 millimeter on the back. The radiator mount holding that radiator on the back is a coolant adjustable radiator mount. I don't know the exact part number. The dust filters that I'm using on the rear radiator are Silverstone. I've got the part number just here there. These. I'm also running this Phobia stripping to seal around the edges of the dust filters anyway that's a lot of detail I'm going into there I better keep keep moving I'm running coolants 
quick disconnects, VL3 ends up there, and the rest are VL4 ends. I'm using all bits power fittings, okay, and I'm not going to go over every single one, but I've got 45s up there, and you can see there's compression fittings, they're all black sparkle fittings, they're all quarter inch threads, and they're for three and a quarter inch OD, half inch ID. Okay, so there you go. They're for half inch tubing, basically. The pumps that I'm running are Swiftec MCP655s with four bits power mod kits. I've got the silver back and the black front on both. Actually, I better just talk a little bit more about the fittings. I've got some extension fittings just there. Another one there. I've got a, a big snake fitting coming up from that pump there. Obviously that's a 90 degree fitting there. So th there's different types of 90 degree. That's an elbow. Then there's 90 degree rotaries, which is my favorite fitting of all. So that's a 90 degree rotary there. I really love those fittings because they can be used in lots of different applications. You can see this there, that's being used as a 90 degree. And you can use them like this as well, which gives you a full rotation side to side. I'm pretty sure it gives you 180 degrees, I guess if you use it like that. I'm using Bits Power 150mm reservoirs. Both of them are exactly the same. All my water blocks are EK. So I'm using an EK Supreme HF full nickel on the CPU. A nickel plexi on the memory. And that's the EK RAM Dominator water block. I'm using EK Nickel Plexi water blocks on the graphics cards. And this is an EK FC bridge, triple. And it's not, not in parallel, it's serial. So, yeah, that's how I'm getting the coolant through the graphics cards. Now, the tubing that I'm using is Feza UV. I'm using black tubing on the GPU loop and red tubing on the CPU loop. So I'll take this opportunity to talk about the loops. The CPU loop goes pump, CPU, memory, triple radiator, reservoir, back to the pump. The GPU loop goes pump, motherboard. Oh, and the motherboard water block that I'm using is the EK nickel acetyl so it's not the nickel plexi and none of the water blocks that I'm using are the new electrolysis nickel they're all the old nickel so they could potentially corrode but I haven't seen any problems at the moment I am running these coolant filters on both of my loops but yeah I will be pulling it apart pretty soon and I'll be having a good look at it then so the coolant that I'm running is Feza UV, red in that loop, blue in that loop. Anyway, I was telling you the order. So motherboard, out to the quad radiator, back to the GPUs, through all the GPUs, reservoir, and then back to the pump. Gosh, it's, it's hard to go over all the specifications without yeah, forgetting what I've already talked about. So the lighting, I've got a red LED strip back there which I've clipped down. I'm not sure of the, the brands of these LED strips but they're custom sleeved by performance PCs. So I've got a blue one down there. They were all 30 centimeters to start with but I did yeah, cut some of them down. So one red, one blue there and I've also got another blue one up the back of that reservoir. And I also have two 3mm red LEDs just there in the memory water block, but the switch panel, which is brand new, is already not working properly. The switch that I set up for the LEDs, because there's two vandal switches, doesn't latch. They're supposed to latch on or off. So, I think that's pretty much about it on this side. I am now going to show you the wiring 
in detail. I'm just trying to think of anything that I've forgotten. Oh yeah, I've got a Sound Blaster X5 Titanium HD sound card in the bottom there. Yep, I think that's pretty much about it. I've installed the SATA 3 and US, or oh, actually just the SATA 3 upgrade in this case. Let me know if I forget anything and I can answer in the comments. Time to show you the wiring. So I have redone this wiring a couple of times when I've reinstalled the power supplies, but I've never gone and redone them again after that. I don't do wiring, like I'm not completely anal about my wiring, I don't make it look perfect or anything like that. It's just, I just do it in a practical fashion so that it's all out of sight from the front, you know, from the part of the build that matters. But around the back of the build where you can't see it, as long as it's not uh, dangerous, you know, pulling on anything or obstructing airflow or caught, you know, not fitting, I'm happy with it. So as long as it fits nicely, uh, and everything's safe and sound, I'm happy with it. Now, it actually looks a lot worse from this angle because you can see it, it's all bunched up, but if you look, you know, completely from the side, it's it's actually not that bad and it is quite neat. It's also dark back here, I apologise. I'm not going to disconnect the entire build and move it because I do run it 24-7 most of the time. But you can see the 8-pin EPS there going up to the top of the motherboard, there's two of those. Over here there's a bunch of Molex because there's a mol an extra Molex powering the motherboard. There's actually two of those, another one goes up to the top there. Got all the fan wires coming back from the quad radiator on the back of the system. You can see them just there and they go back into the fan controllers. The top fan controller does the rear radiator, the bottom fan controller does the top radiator. And you can see there's two temperature temperatures there and there for each loop. So the the rear uh, sorry the CPU loop is on the left, the GPU loop is on the right. 38 degrees and the ambient temperature of this room is 34 degrees right now. So that just there is for LEDs. It's just a massive LED station. You can plug a whole bunch of them into there. As you can see I've only got two plugged into there now. That's all the front panel cables coming out of there. That is for all my lighting. It's a Bits Power X station. All that down there is for powering the pumps. Both the pumps are connected just there. Uh, you can see those yellow and black wires. They go to the pumps. The SATA cables are the biggest pain every time. You can see all those there. And they go down to the bottom. And the hot swap bays. So, yeah, the... AX1200 wiring is, I love it, it's really easy to to install and to keep it neat. It's the rest of the wiring that makes a mess, you know, the, the fans, the lighting, the pumps, the solder cables, that's what creates mess. So there you go, there's the wiring. Okay, that sums up Singularity Beast Upgrades Part 8. I'm not going to be finishing the upgrades. I'm not going to be installing the fans and the fan filters into the top of the case, onto the 360mm radiator. And the reason for that is the, the new system that I'm going to be building is happening within the next week or two it's going to be it's very soon so there's no point in continuing to work on this system 
it's, you know, it's a little bit of a shame, it's a little bit sad for me, but I did build this system, I think nearly two years ago now, actually, yeah, almost exactly two years ago, and I have been upgrading it a lot since then, but, yeah, two years is, is a fair amount of time to, to have a system for me with the same design, because I do this for a living. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe, like and favourite if you want to see more.